to what is the uh, the steps protocol or, or framework. <laughs> and obviously you don't have yeah. to, to touch on all of it, but I'd love yeah. a, an overview. Sure. So, um, you know, uh, often we think that it's random or luck or chance, you know, why some products get more word of mouth than others, why some ideas catch on. Uh, it's not. Uh, there's a science behind it. We've looked at thousands of pieces of online content. We've looked at tens of thousands of brands. We looked at millions of purchases around the world. Uh, and again and again, we see the same six factors uh, come up. Uh, and Contagious, I put them in a framework, as you noted, uh, called the STEPS framework. Uh, that stands for social currency, uh, triggers, emotion, public, practical value, and stories. Each of those is a psychological principle uh, that causes people to talk and share and drives all sorts of products and ideas to, to catch on. Uh, and so if it's helpful, maybe I'll just pick off one of them and talk about it a little bit. And then if you want to talk about another one or you have a favorite, you know, let me know. Um, I'll start with social currency though, because I think it's the, one of the easiest to understand. Um, and I tell a, a fun story in the, a book uh, about a hot dog restaurant in New York City. So, you know, you imagine you're in, in New York City, the pandemic has ended, so you can walk around uh, New York City, uh, you're walking around the Lower East Side, your stomach is rumbling, you got to get a bite to eat. Uh, when you notice a big hot dog shaped sign uh, out in front of a restaurant with the words, eat me, uh, written on it in what looked like mustard. So you say, huh, you know, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't checked this place out before. So you walk down a flight of stairs uh, into this restaurant called Criff Dogs. Uh, now, Criff Dogs has, um, you know, dozens of different hot dogs, an amazing restaurant, uh, has hot dogs, green onion and pineapple, uh, hot dogs with, uh, you know, um, uh, bacon and eggs and wrapped in cheese and all sorts of different things. Uh, but you eat your hot dog, you notice something unusual in the corner of the room. It's actually a phone booth. Uh, go inside. Uh, there's actually a Rotterdam phone inside that phone booth. Stick your finger in the number three, go around in a circle. The phone will actually ring. It'll go ring, ring. Uh, and then if you pick up uh, the other line, uh, someone will say, do you have a reservation? Now, the first time I heard the story, I said, well, what do you mean, do you have a reservation? I'm in a phone booth uh, inside of a hot dog restaurant. Uh, what could I possibly have a reservation for? Uh, but if you have a reservation or a friend of yours happen to make one or they happen to have space, uh, the back of that phone booth will open and you'll be led into a secret bar called Please Don't Tell. Uh, now, please don't tell us violated a number of traditional laws uh, of marketing. No sign on the street, uh, no sign inside the restaurant. They've done everything they can to make themselves difficult to find. And yet, every day they're full. Uh, 3 p.m., phone lines open up. By 3.30, all the seats are gone. Uh, people frantically hit redial again and again, trying to, trying to get through. Uh, and it's not lack of uh, competition, just like uh, folks listening today. You know, there's lots of competition uh, to get into uh, bars in New York City, lots of other bars competing for attention. Um, you know, a couple bars on that side of the street, a couple other bars on the other side of the street. Uh, so how did they cut through the clutter? And they did something really interesting. Essentially, they made themselves a secret. Uh, and let me tell you a little secret about secrets. Think about the last time someone told you something and they told you not to tell anybody else, right? Well, the first thing you probably did in that situation is, is what? You told somebody, right? Because having access to information that not everyone else has makes you look smart and makes you look in the know. And it's an example of what I call social currency, right? Uh, people talk about and share things that make them look good. Right? Uh, we talk about uh, you know, places we go on vacation, we talk about celebrities we met, we talk about getting a new car. Uh, we don't talk about getting fired. Right? We don't post on social media, hey, look at me, I'm at the office, work on an Excel spreadsheet. No, we post, hey, I'm on vacation, look at this beautiful beach, because we want people to think positively of us. But what that means is as brands and organizations, as entrepreneurs, if we want people to share our stuff, we have to stop thinking about ourselves and start thinking more about our audience, right? Too often as uh, people that manage a brand, have a product or service to sell, we think about how do we look, right? Okay, I'm gonna have an ad. It's a nice, you know, print ad. Uh, does it look right? Uh, does the, is the product presented in just the right way? If I'm making a presentation, do I stand up extra straight, you know, and speak uh, like I'm an authority on what I'm talking about? We think a lot about us and the product or service that we're selling. We think less about the person, the listener, the audience that we're talking to, and how what we're doing is going to make them look. Because word of mouth, right, that person doesn't care about us, right? Word of mouth depends on them talking to someone else. And the better we can make them look, the more likely they'll be to talk uh, and share. And so in the book, I talk about a number of different ways to generate social currency, how to make people feel like insiders, how to highlight game mechanics, how to make people look smart, feel special, feel in the know. But at the core, it's all about, you know, how can I take what I'm offering, talk less about me, talk about something that's going to make them look good so they're going to want to share with someone else.
just like please don't tell, right? People don't tell please don't tell stories because they want to advertise for the, the, the bar. They tell those stories because it make them look good. I think I want to tell my friend about this cool bar in New York City because it makes me look like I know what's going on. And so the same thing is true more generally, where we talk about things that are secrets, like in and out secret menu, or uh, you know having a special code that allows us to get access to something online. Whether we talk about you know uh, customer advisory boards where we get early looks at products and ideas. Whether we even think about you know the messages we send to our customers. Zappos a couple of years sent me this great email. I ordered something from them. It was supposed to come a couple days later. They said, hey, you special winner, you. You're such a great customer. We're going to share it with you tomorrow. Now, am I a special winner? Maybe. More likely, they had it in their warehouse, and they could send it to me faster without any additional cost, but they made me feel special. Right? And by making me feel special, they may be more likely to talk and share. And so social currency is all about how can we make our customers and our clients look good and use that to get them to, to talk about us. Did you like what you just saw? Well, great, because our YouTube channel is chock full of tips on how to grow your online business and learn from the best in the industry. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss out. And if you're looking for the absolute best software for entrepreneurs at the lowest possible price, then you should absolutely head over to AppSumo.com and subscribe to our email list. Heck, we'll even throw in 10% off your first order just to make it a no-brainer. Now, you're in on one of the best kept secrets in software.